All right then gang, so we've seen now how to use Tailwind just in time with a simple HTML web page, right? But what about a project using something like Next.js? Well, it's pretty simple, but I just wanted to give you a quick guide on how best to set everything up. So I'm in a terminal here and I'm just gonna generate a new Next.js application by saying npx create next app. And then I wanna say that I wanna use an example Next.js starter template using the E flag and then say what starter template I want. In my case, I'm gonna use one called with hyphen tailwind CSS. So I'll type that. And what this is gonna do is boilerplate a project for us with Tailwind ready and set up inside it. So I'm just gonna give this project a name now and then I'll hit enter to make it. All right, so once that's done, I'm gonna CD into that new project directory and then I'm gonna open it up in VS Code by typing code, space, then a full stop. So now right here, we have our starter project, which is pretty much fully set up to use with Tailwind CSS. So if we take a look inside the package.json file, you can see first and foremost, we have Tailwind installed. We also have auto prefixer and post CSS installed, which are both used in the build step for Tailwind in this Next.js application. So Tailwind is basically being used as a post CSS plugin. And we can see that in the post CSS config file already created for us right here. The other plugin is the auto prefixer one for our final CSS. And you can add your own post CSS plugins here as well, if you want any more, but you don't need to, you can just leave the file as is and everything is gonna work peachy. All right, so next we can also see we've got this Tailwind config file going on already made for us. And if we peek inside that, we can see it's already set up to use the just-in-time compiler, awesome. The difference this time though is in the purge array. So before we just said pretty much any top level HTML file needed to be included in this array, but now we're using React components and they could be in several places in our project and also use different extensions. So currently this setup is saying, look inside the pages folder, which we already have over here, then look in that root level or any subfolder inside it. That's what this double asterisk means right here. And then look for any file with a JS, TS, JSX or TSX extension, because any of those extensions could contain our templates where we're using Tailwind classes. And then we have another value over here, which says do the same, but this time in the components folder. Now that folder doesn't exist yet, but normally when we create next apps, we use something like a components folder to put our drop-in reusable components in. So this is gonna capture any of those two. And any templates we use outside of these paths won't be scanned, and so it won't work if you add a new Tailwind class into any of them, unless you add it into this array. So inside our root app component, you're going to see that we're importing the Tailwind library at the top, right? Now this is coming from the node modules folder and then inside the index component, we can see Tailwind classes being used in the template. So all we have to do is run the next dev command by using the dev script in the package.json file and this should all work. So it should spin up a local development server and under the hood, it's gonna build our Tailwind CSS using the just-in-time compiler. And it's gonna watch our components for changes so it can rebuild the CSS on the fly as we're adding extra classes during development. So let's run this in the terminal. Type npm run dev and then hit enter. Cool, so now in the browser, we can see that all of this works, it's all looking good and the Tailwind CSS is taking effect. So now let's just check we can use those just-in-time extra features. So like the extra variant classes and the arbitrary value classes. So what I'm gonna do is head to the index page and I'm just gonna add a couple of classes to the first H1 right here. So first of all, I'm gonna use the first letter variant class to give it some kind of custom text color. So what we'll do for this is use an arbitrary value of hash 40d860, which is kind of like a lime green color. So both of these features now are only available to us when we're using the just-in-time mode, the arbitrary value, but also this extra variant for the first letter. 
So let's save this now and we can see the rebuild message at the bottom and now let's check it in the browser. And yep, we can see now that the first letter has that green color. So this has all worked. Now, just to demonstrate that this wouldn't work without the just-in-time mode, I'm going to head to the Tailwind config file and I'm going to comment out this mode line right here. So it's now not going to use the just-in-time mode. So I'm going to save the file now and Tailwind is going to try to rebuild the CSS in the background with this new config, which is just going to take a second or two. And now in the browser, we can see that those just-in-time only extra features aren't working. Now the first letter isn't styled any differently from the rest. So let's switch the mode back to just-in-time by uncommenting this again and saving. Cool. And now one more thing I want to show you is how to add our own entry CSS file so we can add our own styles on top of Tailwind. And the way we can do that is by making some kind of global style sheet. I'm going to do this inside a new folder in the root directory called styles, but you don't have to put them in here. You can put them somewhere else if you wish. Then inside that, I'm going to create a new file called styles.css. All right, so inside that file, I'm going to use those three Tailwind directives to pull in the Tailwind CSS. So first up, it's at Tailwind and then base, which is, you know, the base layer. And then it's Tailwind components, which is the component classes. And then finally, it's at Tailwind utilities. And then if we wanted to, we could also add in our own rules down here to combine with the Tailwind rules. So at the minute, Tailwind ain't going to use this file because we're not doing anything with it. We need to import it inside the app file instead of the current import for the Tailwind library. So let's go in there and I'm going to delete that initial import of Tailwind. And all we need to do is replace it with our own. So import and it's double dot forward slash to come out of the current directory. Then we want to go into styles. That's the folder we named right here. And then we want the styles.css file. And now if we were to save this, Tailwind is going to run the magic, rebuild our CSS for us, and now it's set up to use with this file where we can add our own styles as well. Awesome. So there we go, my friends. That's how simple it is to use just-in-time mode with Next.js. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one